So I told you like the 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 school bus I saw on the way home from work the other day, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay, so this is for our listeners, I guess, because I'm going to tell yeah. you again. So I'm driving on my way home, and I pass by a school bus, and written on the side, printed on the side, it says JFK Transportation. And I got home, and I was thinking about it. I was like, that has to be the worst name you can put on the side of a bus for trans- <laughs> transporting people. But, you know, the um, the bus had a roof Especially on it. children. Yeah. Oh, it had a roof on it? All right, all right. The bus okay, had a so roof on it, so it had that going for it. And then I was thinking a little, <laughs> little bit more, and I was yeah. thinking the only name possibly worse than that would be on the side of a limousine, and it would say uh, Princess Diana Transportation. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Princess Diana Transportation. I mean, or, like, or even a, or even a boat. You know how they're naming after females? Like, you know, Princess Diana. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but it makes more sense with a limousine anyway. Or uh, you know, what if what if they uh, what if they named a plane you know Buddy Holly Airlines? <laughs> just it, just terrible, terrible <laughs> ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, exactly. So that's hilarious. So it was what was, was the school called that? Obviously, I, right? I'm assuming called you, JFK. Yeah, but it didn't it didn't say you high school. Should have taken anywhere. a picture, man. Well, I was driving. I literally double taked I because I was going on the, along the right side of it because I needed to get off the freeway. And I looked over. I was like, yeah, yeah it's a bus. It says JFK on the side. And I double I double <laughs> looked. I was like, whoa, why would you put a JFK transportation on the side? That's horrible. <laughs> That's so funny. Man. <laughs> you should have taken a picture. By the uh, way, this is episode 58. We're getting up there. We're getting old. That is wild. Yeah. It's great, man. You know, it feels good to be 58. Um, yeah, yeah. The knees are starting to go a little bit, but there you go. The wrinkles are showing up. You know, wrinkles are showing. Eyes. Yeah, sure. With uh, scratches. I'm wearing glasses, and the glasses are, have that string on it so that I can hang them around my neck. No, you're not. Are you really? Oh, yeah. No, of course not. Oh, oh speaking of, I, I um, um, just how good your eyes are or bad your eyes are. So, I told you that I was vaping right before, like, because I got, I got, you know, I don't really smoke cigarettes, but, but it's just a pain in the ass anyway in California. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll have like, you know, one every other day or, like, or it became like one a week. And even then, I was like, man, it sucks trying to find one, trying to find a place to smoke in California or Southern California, Orange County, and two, not being harassed by people if you find a place, you know? Yeah, no kidding. And I was like, oh, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to vape or something. So I found this finally a vape that kind of you know satisfies me like a cigarette because it's not about the nicotine for me at least i think it's everything it's uh i'm not i'm not going to say it's the carcinogens in the cigarettes either but it's this uh, i guess the like the, the social thickness, aspect of it the thickness of the smoke oh, you know I, yeah it's like more experiential you know so i found one that was like a hookah i guess and it was flavored man i started losing my eyesight <laughs> oh, Jesus. yeah so on <laughs> So a few days ago, I quit it. I, I woke up and I, I woke up and I can't and I couldn't see like everything was blurry. And usually I have very good eyesight. I'm like, I'm quitting it. And I stopped. So the next day I was like, oh, wow, thank you. I can see again. And you, think, now, so you, think, <laughs> you think the loss of eyesight was due to the vaping? Dude, yes. It took away my eye. Like, if I continued, I would have lost my, my eyesight, I think, entirely. Oh, man, that's that's crazy. See, I uh, I smoked <laughs> cigarettes for a while. I no longer do. And I picked yeah. it up relatively late in life. But I okay. always I had that same Me problem too. with like trying to find a place to smoke because uh, I always felt so guilty about it because it stinks up yeah. the whole right. yeah. radius, you know, 15 uh, foot radius that you're Eat. around. And then, yeah, yeah, and then you smell hundred. like and then you smell like cigarettes for the rest of the yeah. day or night or whatever. Right. Um, right. You know. Yeah. But there, there was nothing better than like going to a bar and then going outside and smoking with everyone because that's really, you know, that's how you you socialize. Yeah, it was, you know, exactly. I yeah. miss that aspect of it, I guess. But me I me too. Yeah, the socialization of it. Yeah, yeah. I was more I mean, a social smoker before. I think that's why. Then, um, so if I go somewhere where people socially smoke, I'll I'll end up smoking. You know, whatever. Yeah. You I mean, that's be that's how it was. Or... Uh, my first stint in rehab. Um, I because I, I hadn't smoked cigarettes uh, for a long time before that, but I, yeah. you know, you can't bring your vapes into rehab. Um, um, and so, you know, I'd go outside and just start smoking with everybody. And that's how you make friends. That's that's like, right. You, that's when you talk to people is when you're outside smoking. Yeah. And that's when people see UFOs, too, by the way. A lot, of, a lot of stories are, oh, I was outside having a cigarette. And 
you know, I always thought about why they're making smoking so like illegal because they don't want people to see that stuff. Because uh, seriously, I'll say like 80, 90 percent of like uh, eyewitness accounts are people outside smoking because um, the rest of us are just indoors. There's no reason to go outside. No one does, no one uses telescopes too much or binoculars or mm-hmm. I'm going to go outside and look at the stars. You might have some people like that, but most people aren't. Yeah. That reminds me, actually, the most depressing cigarette I ever had. Um, I was yeah. working at Costco at the time, and it was around Thanksgiving, sure. and so they do like a double shift. So you work, you know, throughout the night. You get there at six six p.m. and you're there until about five a.m. or so. But the, that was the most depressing one. Is I got to the end of my shift, and me and my buddy who was working there, we both went outside and we're like, "Hey, let's have a cigarette before we go home." And we watched the sun rise, and it was the end of the day, and it was just like, oh, this is the absolute worst. There's, just, <laughs> there's, no worse, there's no worse feeling than pulling a full shift like through the night to oh see the God. sun rise, and that's the end of your day. Yeah, so, yeah. There's just a weird feeling about it. and oh, I'm man. sure. Uh, you know, I, you, the, yeah, because, you know, part of – or you know, there's lots of tactics for depression and stuff, and they always say, like, uh, watch a sunrise and sunset. They're saying that's a – they 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 use really? that for people who want to cope with depression. That's one of the things. Yeah, is to wake up and watch a sunrise. You was the opposite. Yeah, you were ending. Yeah, you were ending your day in the sunrise. So I'm sure that's yeah. So there you are. You said it. Yeah, you know, I hated. I hated those things. shifts. And I, yeah. of course, you know, I was the newest. Well, one of the newest guys in the. I was working in the bakery, and so yeah. you get the you get the bad shifts. That and that Costco was haunted to shit. Anyway, uh, that's enough of that. Everyone, thank you for tuning in to the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. Yeah. As always, that is I Want to Believe Adam. Hey, everybody. And I am Tell It All Topher, and I have not come up with a new nickname in weeks. You know, it's fine. You can be always Tell It All. I think Tell It All is a is a very... Um, it's fitting, right? Yeah, very fitting. Yeah. And why not? You know, Tell It All. Don't keep anything inside. I think people that keep really important things inside and let it fester you know eventually it comes out of something worse it's, like it's going to come out anyway it it does i mean i speak from experience you know if you bury that stuff and then you try yeah. and bury it with alcohol um yeah. nothing gets accomplished other than you know legal problems and uh, uh you know drinking problems yeah, and you yeah. Should, and don't do that you don't want any of that trust me drown your sorrows is that is you're supposed it to say it's it's called you drown it with brown, like bourbon yeah. or whiskey. Oh, you drown it with brown. Or yeah. there's the other one, uh, you know, rubbing alcohol is for treating wounds on the outside. Drinking alcohol is for treating wounds on the inside. Oh, my. Oh, my. I've never heard that one. I like that. Um, that cool. and yeah, I'm, like I'm still pretty convinced that's why I never got sick during the whole COVID thing is because I was drinking every single night. <laughs> keep, keep those germs. You, you kill those germs on the inside, man. <laughs> Well, you and a lot of other people, I think millions of other Americans, including me. I mean, I, like it was a big issue, alcohol and drug abuse and because people are at home and yeah, uh, to it, add it, to that. Yeah, it, it did affect a lot of people. Um, yeah, I, I won't say his name. One of my really good friends, his parents um, were our long term recovered alcoholics except apparently they backslid pretty hard during covid because oh, you know yeah they're both retired and had to sit around and do nothing and apparently nothing. they were just miserable and can't see anyone you know if you can't socialize and you're just yeah. watching tv and everything's miserable like ah oh, might as well people picked up smoking again too during the oh yeah time. <laughs> yeah it was um, a okay. rough time for everyone all right so let's get started we yeah. got a lot to go through um i did st- delete some some things you sent me some things i sent you i'm like you know it's not doing a two-hour show again um or you know it might end up being that much i don't know but you sent me this i think it'll be funny to start out this way oh thank you so you guys talk a lot including today about how the border wouldn't be such a big deal if congress would have just passed your immigration bill on day one who was in charge of Congress on day one? <laughs> and how is President Biden ever going to convince the three quarters of voters who are worried about his physical and mental health that he is okay, even though in Las Vegas he told a story about recently talking to a French president who died in 1996? All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well, I did laugh at that, but I do have to point out it is edited. She did kind of I respond, know, yeah. but it was a you know 
in great fat great her normal fashion she didn't answer anything just kind of went right she did yeah, yeah but it is really funny and it sucks and you know i mean i guess it is it is timely Ducey's hilarious the way he asks his questions yeah um but i think that was was that before the putin interview or was it, it was it was it was a it few was days before mm -hmm. all right so it just shows how he was acting and then here's this i think no. the apple was it vision max vision pro vision pro so people are around going around looking like robots here she goes she's typing in, in the air walking around so weird and of course she's got a tesla of course she's got a tesla there's another one i think you sent me where it was a tesla driving itself and the guy yeah, we, was wearing these and typing we, we uh we we showed that last week actually oh it was last, so it was already out by then yeah Man. um wow. oh i can't remember if i told you or not i saw a cyber truck uh the other day in irvine oh yeah you have to yeah, yeah. shoot at some place yeah 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 you told me and i saw one too i saw a couple on, on the freeway so they're out yeah Pretty so cool. Super Bowl is tomorrow, right? And that's why we're doing this show early. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martin Scorsese has directed a an ad for Squarespace, which is the website creator or website builder. Um, good company. Not too sure about their SEO. You know, I probably would not recommend if you want to rank for anything. But it's a <laughs> it's a very timely video with the Super Bowl with with ufos and stuff you know it's wrap it's putting them both together yeah so, let's watch this it's pretty funny actually and i think it makes a lot of sense or at least uh martin scorsese has yeah. his insights which you know he's he's got he's got great insights he's got his finger on the pulse he does right he understands like what humans how humans act and i think that's why his movies are so good yeah absolutely. Um, all right so let's take a look at this <laughs> Reports of flying saucers are nothing new. These are routine sightings, not isolated events. Are you seeing that? It's spinning. There's a whole swarm of them. Oh my god. They're all against the wind. All against the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. That's 110, 100 No one's even looking, right? They're on their phone. An <laughs> I told you to take Broadway. This always happens. <laughs> I've got mixed. Okay. I've got mixed feelings about it. Like I, I'm trying to figure out because I, I, I almost got the feeling he's like it's. Uh, he was going for like it's super depressing that everyone's so focused on their phones they can't even right. look and see what's around them. But the whole yeah. point of the commercial is to like get your eyes on the screen back to the screen oh, yeah good point. because that's back what squarespace the does they build websites right yeah 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 so uh -huh. yeah and then you know i think what i said to you is i i was conflicted but it's cool that ufos are so mainstream now you can make a commercial like this and everyone's like oh hey it's the current thing that's happening instead of like oh yeah, man what a bunch thing, weirdos. Yeah, exactly well i mean 100 million people right watch super bowl well that's Some, only in this country i think yeah, I was gonna say probably more. Yeah, probably a lot more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, still, it's cool though. It's, it's, cool. it's yeah, Scorsese, right? He's, he does things pretty. But yeah, they're, All you're right. People, 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 he's he's complaining that everyone's looking at their phones and they can't see what's going up on uh, you know on top of them. And then, but then when those beings create a website and it's on people's phones, then they realize, right? Yeah. That's what they're yeah. I don't know. So maybe they are. Maybe they are. Um, it's communicating still fun. With and if you do end up watching this today, Saturday, um, you'll probably see that commercial tomorrow during the Super Bowl. So you got to hear first, folks. 
That's right. And just to go on the theme uh, of going uh, of understanding anti gravity and anti gravity technology, uh, Michael Schrack came out with another video. Um, basically, because there is evidence, right? Like lots of evidence. A lot of these scientific books, comic books, um, um, scientific research, like in the fifties, were saying, "All right, gravity, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming," and then it went black. It, it was gone. So here he goes through some of these magazines, like this one is called Young Men. But yeah, let's, let's listen to Sherat. And then I recommend watching the entire video to our listeners. It's a lot of fun because, and he proves like something is wrong here because they were there, they reached it, and then it went all black. Well, we know where it went. Right, yeah. If you read this book, and I've got the chat open here, so I'm so glad to be with everybody. In this book, he talks about how one of his co-workers laid an interesting article that came from this publication, Young Men. And within this publication, there was an article called uh, The G-Engines Are Coming. This is Young Men, November 1956. And it's this article that really broke this whole thing open because it named the contractors. It named the universities that were working on cracking the gravity barrier. It gave uh, contractors dates, locations. It really was uh, a watershed moment, and it's it's good to have a, an original copy of this entire publication here. So I'm going to dive into this, and yeah, they give you this does illustration. Look, does that look familiar to you? Do you remember um, last yeah, week he was going through some cases? Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like the one that landed on the road and had the big antenna sticking yes! out the back. Yes, Exactly. This one doesn't have the antenna sticking out the back. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. But that so that one was in 1963. So oh, seven years, okay. seven years after this. Gotcha. So that's crazy corroboration. To kind of start out this that. article, the, the historical legacy of gravity research, the G engines are coming. Young men, November 1956. That's the reference for all this. Cool. And then this is our uh, full color rendering, based on the, the uh, periodical black and white uh, illustration, just to give you that. Now, this is interesting because if you look closely at the configuration of this craft, it kind of looks like mm -hmm. a refined version of the March 23rd, 1966 oh, Eddie Laxon case. So it's kind of got that same thing, but a much more modern version here. All right, let's go to the next one. So here's what the newspaper clippings talk about within that periodical publication article. Amarillo Daily News, here. November source, scientific. Now we're seeing what's going on here. Okay, let's continue here. New York Times, with life itself as the greatest unsolved mystery in the universe. Ooh, the wording on this. All right, so yeah, I don't want. So the initial steps of an almost incredible program to solve the secret of gravity and universal gravitation are being taken today in many of America's top scientific laboratories and research centers. A number of major, long-established companies in the United States aircraft and electronics industries are also involved in gravity research. Scientists in general bracket gravity with life itself as the greatest unsolved mystery in the universe. It's pretty cool. I mean, and you're right, which you mentioned earlier, that it just went black because this is from the 50s. So they either cracked it and completely buried it so the U.S. government or I mean the military or whatever could mm -hmm. use it in secret or it, it failed so badly um, they couldn't that get went, went away. it and it just went away and, you know, it got buried also. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, people say breakaway civilization, but they also say like oligarch breakaway uh not 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 in a, a civilization or a government, but like all the like corp, corporate breakaway, and that's what this might be is they mm -hmm. crack it and then yeah, they take it and bury it, and then they continue while you know government and society the wording on it. this is incredible. Talking about the greatest unsolved mystery in the universe, something that far surpasses the atomic bomb program. Now we're seeing what's going on here. Okay, let's continue here. New York Times, February 7th, 1957. Gravity studied as power source. Scientific research seeking control of force disclosed at engineer meeting. Now, it says, Jesse Vernon Honeycutt, a director and vice president of the Bethlehem Steel Company, declared, quote, should the mystery be solved, it would bring about a greater revolution in power, transportation, and many other fields than the discovery of atomic power. 
these quotes are important when you look at the whole picture here. For Yeah, I mean, it's 1957. So we're still in the middle of like the hydrogen bomb, I think, was 1953. So we're talking about four years after that, you know. I mean, yeah. the, the well, advancement was so quick, you know. I mean, now we see crazy advancement too. But then in the military, in this field, with the atomic bomb and hydrogen bomb and then anti-gravity, it was so quick. I mean, it's like it, it, they took off. But, you know. Yeah, and, and what do we know about power and, and transportation is, is that there is a ton of money to be made. And if you yeah. create a system that makes it cheap and easily accessible to everyone, those companies that are right you know that that control power control transportation they lose their their money and they, they've got a vet, vested interest in making sure this kind of technology doesn't get yeah. out to the general public right right and those are the are the oligarchs the one that own oil you know it's it's the mm -hmm. rockefellers those are huge corporations we have to break them up um energy electricity it's been the same electricity grid forever you know much not much has changed since tesla um but with this is in the, in, in 1957 anyway we can continue on, but it, it just shows how gravity research was really serious, was very advanced in the 50s. And then this presentation just proves that it, it, it went it went dark. What's this? Within the next 10 years, electric propulsion. Yeah, see? I mean, Tesla even had uh, some patents in the late 18, 19th century, 1800s, like 1890. Yeah. He had a UFO. So there it is. I think it's this one. And I think that's yeah. just his, uh, his Tesla coils, um, but electricity for space exploration. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I just watched, um, I was, I was going through last night and watching some, I watched the new, um, the Y files and some of the older ones. And yeah. he, he, one of the older ones he was talking about was Tesla and, and how basically it was the same thing. Cause Tesla wanted to give free energy and power mm -hmm. all over the world because he thought it was feasible and he got shut down so hard by everybody yeah. basically blacklisted he couldn't get any they funding did. couldn't get any funding for it and it's the same yeah. same type of deal here is anyone who's trying to you know make the world a better place allow people to have free this free that you know with no subscription no payment no you know nothing yeah. um they get completely blacklisted and shut yeah. down something or someone just wants to keep humanity enslaved unfortunately something very powerful um yeah. but yeah even when, when tesla died the government took all his documents and guess who was involved with looking through those documents it was uh trump's uncle yes it was yes it was trunkle i think he's called yeah no Within it really was it really was trump's uncle though people yeah yeah it was it was trump's uncle and that and that's why people, a lot of people say trump knows a lot more about this subject than uh than is than is known you know, and his he's his he was very close to his uncle. He was very close to Nixon too. Anyway, that's that's another subject. But yes, the rabbit hole for that goes deep. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because the FBI came in and what did they say? They had eighty trunks worth of Tesla stuff, and then when they mm -hmm. sent it to Serbia, I think, to the Tesla Museum, they only sent over sixty trunks and said, "Oh no, that's all we've got." Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people say that a lot of the technology we have is actually from those papers of Tesla. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially all of the flying, like a lot of the UFOs that we have. It's a, it's like a trade publication. It's only about eight pages, ten pages in length. Electricity for space exploration within this Ryan reporter here. And then they give you this. Hmm, isn't this interesting? Illustration of an aerospace vehicle which incorporates an aeroelectric propulsion system features circular disk configuration. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, if you read this three-page article within this publication, they are absolutely not talking about solid rockets here. Okay, within this publication, I've got a quote. It says, within the next 10 years, Electric propulsion will play a leading role in making extensive spaceships possible. So not only do we have the universities working on it, we've got the defense contractors working on it. And now you can see that even in their own publications, they're leading us into the direction of these circular dish-shaped craft that have no solid rocket boosters. So we're heading in the right direction here. All right, let's yeah, go to the next one. They are. Miami Herald, anyway, December second. Uh, great, great presentation. We can we can go forward here. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, go ahead. Check it out. How? Yeah. No, I was yeah, just gonna say. To go ahead, check it out. To our, to our listeners, go ahead and <clears> check <throat> it out. Uh, 
as a reminder, if you're a first time listener, we do post everything that we talk about in the show notes. So you guys can go and, right. and watch the full clip um, because we only are showing little small segments of it. Right. And it, he, he, it's important to say that he goes contractors, universities, corporations, all of them are talking about this in the fifties. And it was, it was pretty, it was pretty imminent back then, you know, so anyone saying, Oh, there's nothing there. It's all hogwash. Here's another one. Uh, this is from Whitley Strieber's website, unknowncountry.com. U.S. Air Force textbook on UFOs from 1968. So this is <clears throat> Introductory Space Science Volume 2. So this is a leaked U.S. Air Force textbook. And there's a chapter. So it goes Department of Physics, U.S. Air Force, Chapter 32. 30, 33. Oh, 33. I missed that last little of line there. Of course. 33. Mm -hmm. Unidentified flying objects edited by Major Donald Carpenter. So this goes through the entire history. Really, to tell you, I don't want to go through it all. It even goes through like sightings from the 1800s. Uh, here we go. Like Alexander Hamilton. Oh, wow. Many documented UFO sightings occurred through the Middle Ages, including an especially starting one of a UFO over London on December 16th, 1742. However, we do not have room to include any more of the Middle Ages sightings. Instead, two more, quote unquote, more recent sightings are contained in this section to bring us up to modern times. In a sworn statement dated April 21st, 1897, a prosperous and prominent farmer named Alexander Hamilton Leroy, mm, Kansas, <laughs> USA, told him an attack upon his cattle at about 10.30 p.m. the previous Monday. He, his son, and his tenant grabbed axes and ran some 700 feet from the house to the cow lot where a great cigar-shaped ship about 300 feet long floated some 30 feet above the cattle. It had a carriage underneath, which was brightly lighted with within. Dirigible and gondola? Question mark. Mm and which had numerous windows. Inside were six strange-looking beings jabbering in a foreign language. Huh. Once the beings became aware of Hamilton and the others, they immediately turned a searchlight on the farmer and also turned on some power, which sped up a turbine wheel, about 30 feet in diameter, located under the craft. The ship rose, taking with it a two-year-old heifer, heifer, uh, <laughs> which was roped about the neck by a cable of one-half-inch thick red material. Oh. The next day, a neighbor, Link Thomas, found the animal's hide, legs, and head in his field. Oh, boy. He was mystified at how the remains got to where they were because of the lack of tracks in the soft soil. Very common with cow mutilation. Yes, it is. So he's and, got a sworn statement here. Yeah, and then he goes in. Yeah, he's, he jumps. Yeah. Um, Alexander Hamilton's sworn statement was accompanied by an affidavit as to its veracity. Uh, the affidavit was signed by 10 of the local leading citizens. Wow. Wow. That's not a joke, man. Yeah. That's so, I mean, fun. this kind of stuff has been going on a very, very long time. It has. And this chapter, you know, if it really was part of the Air Force, it's just such a, it just reads like a textbook, too, when you, when you read it. Yeah. And that's um, how it should how, be. It should just be facts, right. not sens sensationalized stuff. Yeah, so it goes through Socorro, this whole, the whole Socorro thing in New Mexico. It talks about that with uh, Sergeant Zamora. Um, and if people, I'm sure people know about that one, right? Where he's a police officer. He um, he saw something. He pulled over. He saw an egg shaped craft that had that logo where it was like a, a, a delta with mm -hmm. three, with three, whatever. Saw the beings. They went in, they took off. It was a Project Blue Book one. So that's in here too. Um, and then they talk about natural phenomena and they talk about crazy people. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information here, yeah. Uh, but then you know, they talk about, yeah, this is what's this uh, distance of observer. I want to see, I want to get to the part where they talk about the different types of UFOs because it's not just historical, they tell them, you know, how to look out for these things. Here it is, right here. Uh, Further data correlation is quite difficult. There are a large number of different saucer shapes, but this may mean little. For example, look at the number of different types of aircraft which are in use in the U.S. Air Force alone. It is obvious that intensive scientific study is needed in this area. No such study has yet been undertaken at the necessary levels of intensity of, and support. Uh, one thing that must be guarded against in any such study is the trap of implicity and assuming that our knowledge of physics or any other branch of science is complete. Aha. Uh -huh. 
An example of one such trap is selecting a group of physical laws, which we now accept as valid, and assume that they will never be superseded. That's a really, really good point. Yeah. Five such laws might might be every action must have an opposite and equal reaction. Every particle in the universe attracts uh, yeah. every other particle with a force proportional to the product of the masses and inversely as a square of the distance. Energy, mass, and momentum are conserved. No material body can have a speed as great as C, the speed of light in free space. The maximum energy, uh, which can be attained from a body, is at, re at rest is E equals MC squared, where M is the is the rest mass of the body. Anyway, it's just yeah, it's just examples of laws that we we think they're completely ir, they can't be changed. Um, but I what this article is saying is we we can't approach scientific study that way right exactly we have to we have to be open we can't close our minds just because our advanced science says that that's the way it is you know how can it be any way any other way you know and and you know there are people that still think that way like well okay i believe in aliens it's a really big universe and there's they gotta be out there but i don't believe they're here they can't come here it, that's the thinking you know yeah because uh, we're stuck in that paradigm but even it even goes and talks about different groups of aliens they're saying there's at least three and maybe four different groups of aliens possibly at different stages of development um but they admit this is too this too is difficult to accept and implies the existence of intelligent life on a majority of the planets in our solar system or a surprisingly strong interest in earth by members of other solar systems <clears throat> a solution to the ufo problem may be obtained by the long and diligent effort of a large group of well-financed and competent scientists. Unfortunately, there is no evidence suggesting that such an effort is going to be made. Interesting why they'd say that, huh? Mm -hmm. Look, and I, I've said this over and over again. I'm, I'm going to say one more time. You need to read The Three-Body Problem, the, that series of books. All of this stuff, a lot of the stuff we talked about on the show is ingrained in those books it's super super interesting but the whole concept of aliens you know it's been so saturated by media you know everyone thinks they're essentially would look like not look like humans but would be humanoid you know but one yeah. of the articles we we talked about last week what if some of the laws of physics themselves are the aliens you know it's it's things like that like someone yeah. couldn't even comprehend right um, that's the, the stuff more interesting to me than just little green men on mars right i mean even that the laws of physics are intelligent you know that yeah. they are also non-human intelligence. yeah it's not one thing it's so many other things because it's all connected life is everywhere intelligence is everywhere so you sent me this and there's a lot of chatter about this also there um, is no, and as you pointed out there has been for a while but as we know it's an election year uh yeah. things are ramping up and we're everything is coming back in the cycle we posted a couple episodes ago that the last time the kansas city chiefs played the 49ers in a super bowl uh COVID happened it was COVID, yeah and um you know and it was and, a leap year and it was a leap year and trump got elected and here we are again or yeah. not, i'm sorry it was uh, biden of, got elected biden got elected. it was the end of trump's term so here, here we go again the cycle continues um so this is off of reddit the, from the subreddit prepper intel FBI Director Christopher Wray warned about the growing threat of Chinese cyber attacks against U.S. electrical grids and other infrastructure in an appearance Wednesday morning before the White House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, yeah. So this kind of stuff, um, this really would be scary. I mean, we joke about, oh, yeah. man, what am I going to do without my phone? But imagine the absolute chaos that would occur if, like, even for it's, a few days, yeah. if our entire... fridges are the problem if your fridge is gone for two weeks for two days yeah and food starts going bad and you start getting hungry then that's when shit hits the fan exactly you yeah. know the the whole the whole country would just shut down and not like covid shut down where you have to stay in your house it's like you can't you know the grocery like store would shut down yeah, yeah. I, I mean like who knows I, I you can't even fathom it everything we everything in our and our lives at this point revolves around the use of electricity. It feels like everything, you know, it, it, you're back in the stone ages when, this, when there's no electricity. Um, you know, many, that's why many people bought generators, gas generators, solar generators, you know, preppers, 
Mm-hmm. You got to be ready for these things. And if a cyber attack does happen, especially on infrastructure, it might take months, months, or even yeah. years. If it, it, it depends on, on the on the damage for it to be fixed again. Yeah, I mean you it's it, it's a joke now, but imagine you know having a gun shoved in your face for a can of beans. It'll happen. Um, It'll happen if they know. If someone knows you got food in your house or yeah. something, yeah, yeah. It's scary stuff, so, man. What what and what's the there's a there's a percentage like um they always talk about Americans are like two missed paychecks away from being homeless. I think but one, it, right? Yeah, like something yeah. like that. But uh, like compound that into it's not just the the unlucky soul that doesn't get a paycheck it's everyone you know after a month it'll become everyone you know yeah most 99 percent of people will be in a desperate situation yes it's so terrifying it's terrifying stuff get to know your neighbors uh their family close by (laughs) yeah yeah, be nice to them um if you are uh hoarding food or something not hoarding food if you are planning or prepping and you do have food you know probably it's not a good idea to tell everyone about it you know, absolutely people not people get desperate it doesn't mean you can't be generous but do it in a way like oh yeah you know i don't have much but here's this just to help out you know kind of thing yeah um, but that's see it's that's dangerous too because it's kind of like feeding the stray cat you know oh they'll come back yeah <laughs> or they'll man t- it's tough it's tough huh yeah i think i think it'll take about a month for things to for for the community to figure out what what's going on so see electricity is gone you know, what we're used to, these distribution networks and centers and all that. Um, I think people will organize. Maybe it'll be direct to farm, uh, you know, farmers to people, you know, instead of like truckers, trucking whatever, you know, from the heartland or from the farms. I think every community, everything become local is what I'm saying. Like the farm to market that we see every weekend, that will be like for everyone, not just for the hipsters. Yeah, kind of it'd be a fun little social event. Uh, yeah, that'd be yeah, also exactly. super dangerous. Uh, yeah, that's true too. But again, it depends on the community, and it really is about that too. You know, it just if everyone works together and is civil and um, you look out for each other, then we'll be okay. As you know, if it's everyone out for themselves and guns, and you know, it's just going to be chaos and everyone's going to be protecting their own forts. And I just hope it doesn't go that way. Yeah. Some communities will. Yep. Um, Kirkpatrick is still on his PR tour. We're not going to spend too much time on this. He he did say some things. Oh, look at that. I stopped it on 333. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So he's uh, on Scientific American again, but this time on a podcast. Um, the guy's not asking him any hard questions. He's letting Kirkpatrick basically just go on his uh, propaganda misinformation uh, tour. So I stopped to hear because he answers a pretty a, a good question. But as usual, we know he's not telling the truth or mm-hmm. he is he's mm-hmm. up to something or being as we because you sent me that other post with him. It sounds like he's been forced to oh. hide stuff. Y- yeah, very strange. So we get we we get. Uh, conflicting messages on this was described uh, and and documented, which we did, and that was the last report that I signed out before I retired. So in it, there is a bunch of programs that were named. Um, those are all classified. We found what all of those programs are and reported those back up to Congress. Congress's concern is that there was a program that they did not have insight into. Um, And that is not the case. Um, What we found is that everything that's been named or identified has a legitimate oversight committee. It's been reported out. It may be state-of-the-art capabilities that if somebody were to see and didn't understand, but that's the scope of the investigation. It's fair to say that you have... All right, so he's basically saying there that that... He understands that if someone saw these projects and saw the technology, would think it's aliens. He's saying it's not. It's just really high tech stuff. And they don't know what they're talking about. And they all have oversight, according to Kirkpatrick. Right. That's why all that black budget money just gets missing. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's missing. And it's been outed many times. But because Kirkpatrick said so, then it's it's all fine. It has has oversight. Congress knows what's going on. Even though we know. Congress does know what's going on, or a lot of them don't. And we we've seen how efficient um, our government is, and how good at their jobs they are. 
Yeah, and he's on Politico again. You know, they they talk about him. Maybe we don't have to go through that. What? Oh, here's um, here's George Knapp on him. This this isn't George. Yeah, George always has good takes. So he talks about Kirkpatrick's uh, latest PR tour. Seems to me, big picture, that there's a couple of goals of this uh, Kirkpatrick disinformation media tour he's been on. One is to give mainstream media an excuse to not dig into this anymore. Yeah. They've already ignored it for 70 plus years for the most part. You had the New York Times story by Ralph and Leslie and Helene in 2017 that really kicked things into gear. And it was uncharacteristic for the New York Times to give that kind of a platform to the UFO topic, but they did. And other mainstream media followed for a while. Now they've sort of all slunk back into the corner into the same position that most of them have always had. Exactly. They don't want to deal with this. They don't They don't want to cover it. They don't want to spend the resources to actually get to know the topic and the witnesses. They don't do any of that stuff. So Kirkpatrick saying there's nothing to see here, folks, move along, is exactly what mainstream media wants and needs uh, because they don't want to deal with it anyway. Secondly, it, it seems to be targeting Congress. I mean, you know, the interest level of Congress in the UFO subject is a series of peaks and valleys in history. There are periods where it gets really. What do you think about that? What do you think about that where he says that Kirkpatrick is basically just giving an excuse for most of the mainstream media to ignore this and say, ah, well, see, the, the ex head is saying that's nothing. He looked at it. Oh, I knew it. Let's just I, I move think on. it's I think it's extremely likely because that's what people do. Yeah. Um, like this p- political article article that you had up. People, if you're online, for instance, and you go, you want to talk about aliens or UFOs, someone can just post that and go, well, our, you know, the guy in charge says they're not real. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. like, well, that's, I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's frustrating. But, yeah. you know, I, I do think it's really likely. Because it's easy. Most people are lazy, right? They don't want to do the work. They don't want to go into it. It's a headache, you know, especially something this big. And it is huge. And it's 80 years. And it's a cover-up. And, and you have and whistleblowers. And, the most yeah. frustrating thing are the idiots that say stuff like, um, to make an extraordinary claim, you have to have extraordinary evidence. <sighs> and that, and they use that stupid, dumb fucking argument. And you show them all of the evidence that has no, been no. accumulated over the years. Yeah. And then they'll post an NBC article about Kirkpatrick, and that's their proof that none of it's real. I think people and you just want to drop kick them. Why. You just want to take a running jump jump and just <laughs> kick them right in the head <laughs> for being such a moron. WWE style. Yeah. Give them the people's yeah. elbow. So he goes and then he continues here with um the high, like now. And then after a while, it goes away. The media coverage that happened after that New York Times uh, article gave Congress some political cover. Hey, there's really a genuine mystery here. There's a legitimate national security issue at stake. We should look into this, which they've been doing since early 2018 behind closed doors. That's a good point because Kirkpatrick, yeah, he did. He he targeted the media first. He's like, don't worry, guys. I'm I got it. There's nothing here. And then and then he went after Congress also in those articles and those podcasts, mm-hmm. saying they got captured by a bunch of conspiracy theorists and we have UFO religionists in Congress. And so he's like, you know, make he's like trying to scare con- uh, Congress people and senators to leave this subject alone too, like ridiculing them, man. Yeah, what a whatever, dangerous man. guy this guy is. You know? yeah. Hearing from witnesses, hearing from credible people like David Fravor, for example, and other witnesses, whistleblowers, and they took it seriously because they're credible people. These are people that we have entrusted that uh, the, the safety of our families, the security of our country. We give them our most sophisticated weapon systems. We trust them with sensors to protect our lives. And yet when they have this kind of information, Based on their training and experience, we're not supposed to believe them. Well, Congress did believe them. And it's not something you and I cooked up. That was underway long before we came on the scene. So, you know, I think that 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 is what Kirkpatrick is is trying to do. Chase the media away, give them a a reason not to cover it, and chase Congress away and let them know they're going to look silly if they pursue this. Our friend and colleague, Chris Sharp. Yeah, so for sure, that's, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Because mm-hmm. both of those w- were allies, right? With the with disclosure coming out, was was Congress and the media. The media started coming on our side, and, and 
that's who he targeted. And now, of course, you know, popular mechanics comes out. UFOs and aliens. As a scientist, I believe in both. But here's where I draw the line. Oh, God. He, he's one of those that, you know, goes through it, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't talk about the UAP Disclosure Act. None of that. Just talks about Arrow. And then... And then what you just talked about, the whole you need evidence. Can I, I think it's right here. Where is it? There are aliens. Uh, no substantial evidence. Wait. I want to... Because he does quote exactly what you talked about. It is impossible without further evidence. Anyway, it's not that important. But I'm just saying, like, you know, it's just, it's just the same spiel. Like, there's no evidence. Look, in, no, these people have not looked into it. What they mean by no evidence is that someone like per Kirkpatrick or someone that head of the DOD hasn't come out and said so. That's what they mean. Yeah, there exactly. There is so much evidence out there that's been leaked, official evidence, and and we'll, we can go through that, too, later on, because um, one and thing that survived, yeah, no, I was just gonna say, and even some of the evidence they use is not, is not, uh, is not accurate. You know, like for for instance, like I always think back to Roswell. Um, yeah, and they always talk about, oh, it's an air balloon, it's an air balloon, and like the people who were there at the yeah. scene who worked for the military were like, right, what the hell is this? And then the guy who's I can't remember his name. He was the Marcel. Marcel. He was the one that had the picture taken with the thing, yeah. right? Uh -huh. He came out and said basically they took all the evidence he brought in put it in a back room and came out with a random yeah. like junk and made him hold it and pose for a picture yeah. and said if yeah. you tell anyone about this you know yep. we'll murk you and he was part of the team that used to launch those weather balloons so he knew what they were yeah and he goes this crash was not that it was something else and goes, so why, i would know and so why the people who were like oh well roswell was clearly an air balloon like why aren't you using the evidence that shows it wasn't an air balloon because they just can't handle it or it just doesn't fit their paradigm. So they just go with what fits their paradigm, unfortunately. You know, and like and that's uh, that's another thing. If you if you just outright trust what the government tells you, I honestly think you're a moron. I, I can't I can't even do especially with after stuff. COVID. I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah seriously. Especially I, after that. Forget 9-11. Well, and why JFK. would the government lie to us? I, 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 I go, no, I can't even talk to you. You're so far <laughs> down being a moron. It's like to be like kicking my own head. COVID is the litmus test. Seriously. It really is. I mean, if you if you seriously still push that, then I, I don't know. <laughs> You're either like a, just an NPC or a shell. Yeah, it's so true. Cuomo, Cuomo has been really going after this, and he had Ryan Graves on, which is cool. Um, so they 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 talk about what's what's been going on. I'm not going to go through the whole uh, clip. I think. The first half is important. When I started dealing with this conversation and sitting at some of those tables in D.C., when I was first testifying, uh, well, I won't call it testifying, but I was say communicating to folks within the Senate Armed Service Committee and Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, there were all the representatives essentially and the, the, the staffers on one side and the DOD folks on the other side. And the vast majority of the communication was me speaking about our experiences and the representative being told by the DOD folks that they didn't have high enough clearances to continue the conversation. Did you hear that? So he's trying to tell Congress, this is what I saw, this is what I experienced, this is what my team has experienced. And then DOD is sitting there saying, sorry, they don't have the clearance to hear this. You can't go forward with your <laughs> testimony. <laughs> oh, God. Nothing there, though. There's nothing there. No, There's yeah. nothing there. And always <laughs> trust the government. They never, they never lie or do anything wrong. <laughs> oh man! And I think that's been where this conversation has been in Congress for probably about five years or so, where essentially there has been a lot of stuff on to your point, um, not being able to get right into the programs, not having the proper clearances, not having proper rooms available. I do get the sense that this last ICIG meeting that they had, which wasn't a properly proper um, um, secure space. The representatives did seem, I would say, more interested uh, coming out of that in the conversation. There did seem to be something that impacted them in a, I'll say, positive way for the conversation, continued exploration of the conversation. It would have been very easy, I think, for a lot of people to come out of there frustrated and say, or to say that, you know, not much had happened. But I think that was like, I think it was, um, I forget which representative said, but maybe one of their first real briefs <laughs> on this topic. Um, at least that's how I'm interpreting it. And I think there has been a lot of 
you know, the whole back and forth on classification, not just with the David Grush incident, but for the past few years, you know. Well, look, and, and Grush, again, is somebody people would have loved to have seen um, kind of smeared, and it hasn't happened. Uh, same with you. Nobody's come out with the, the the usual, which is, you know, this guy got relieved of duty for a reason. You know, this guy's disgruntled. You know, we're in the middle of litigation with him. You know, that's what usually happens. Mm -hmm. um, and none of that has happened here. I see this story as the biggest, most obvious head fake of anything else I've covered. Um, the, the Russian dossier. Oh, that was fake. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was uh, something that was relied on too much by people who should have known better. They knew it was raw intelligence. They had a lot of corroborated stuff. Fake. They decided to invest. Did you hear that? It was, it was not fake because, you know, he, I remember he covered it on CNN. That's why he's saying that. It was not fake. But then he just said it was wrong intelligence, <laughs> which means what? it's fake. Wait, did he say wrong intelligence or did he say raw, R-A-W? Oh, I, I okay, thought he I'm said sorry. raw then intelligence, right. as then in it right. hasn't been disseminated. Corroborated. As, yeah. All right. Okay, okay. You're right. But still, raw, yeah, it means it wasn't corrupt, but still means it's fake. I'm sorry. <laughs> raw <laughs> intelligence. But yeah, that's, that's much better than wrong. The corroborative stuff. They decided to investigate the way they decided it, um, you know, exacerbated it, but it was all what it was. This story... You know, Biden and his kid. Look, that is what it is. Either you find that the money went to the guy, the, the family in the way it should have or it, it didn't. You know, um, the election rigged. Either you find that people faked votes or counted the votes wrong or you don't. This one is the only one where we have been told absolutely nothing <laughs> by the people who use our money and our power of agency to keep us safe without explanation. I've never heard anything else like it. Maybe that's why, why? a lot of people. Why? Why? That's, that is a great question, mm -hmm. I think. And a great insights from Cuomo there. It's the only one. And this is someone who's been looking into things like he said, Russia Gate or whatever the memo and Biden and, and, and Hunter and that corruption there and you know, the election. He's saying anything, anything he can look into. He can, yes or no, or somewhere in the middle. This is the only subject that we are told nothing. Stonewall doesn't mm -hmm. exist. Zero, right? And yeah. that's why it's driving him crazy. It was driving a lot of us crazy. <laughs> and then, yeah, and probably why this came out too. Release the X Files. I'm the X Pentagon. I don't know if I believe this so much, or I don't know where they got this this um, quote. You mentioned it earlier in the show. I'm the X Pentagon UFO chief, and I was gagged from revealing alien secrets. The bombshell files must be released. Um, this is talking about Kirkpatrick. The Pentagon's mm -hmm. X UFO chief has made sensational claims. He was gagged from revealing top secret information on alien life. How does that happen after his PR tour? This guy is seriously a disinformation agent. If he really said this, you uh, know, I, I don't know. Maybe he's like, um, who's that? Who's the UFO? Heineck. No, 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 no. Oh, the guy who worked for the government and admitted that his job was to fake stories. And then he came out and said, Oh, no, Dodie. Yeah, now I'm on your guys' team. Yeah, Dude, maybe yeah. maybe it's one of those. I don't know. I I, I don't know. Yeah, so Sean Kirk. I mean, they might, they got to have if if he truly is being gagged like this, then they've got some serious dirt on him. He sa he said his bosses within the Pentagon stopped him speaking the truth to the public on multiple occasions, despite him having evidence to support his findings. The physicist who served as a UFO chief. For a year, said he felt that his department wasn't allowed to reveal enough information about the mis about mysterious cra aircraft. Dr. Kirkpatrick explained there was a very strong concern to engage in the public discourse as often as I thought we needed to. The fact that they can't figure out how to get that at that message without concern or spillage into other areas has always been a frustrating point. I'm not sure... You know how this reads. That's what he was saying. You know, I think yeah. See, kind of this is this is the question I had when you originally sent it to me. That's why I think I asked you. I said, "Is he saying that um, I was gagged from telling the truth that aliens do exist, or I couldn't tell the truth because it would compromise 
um, other, you know, like our our military and stuff. Because I mean, if, you, if you remember, he was talking about the orbs and saying it's a global phenomenon. He was very different when he first started. I mean, something happened like towards the middle of his tenure. Not yeah, he tenure, got he got him. probed. He got sucked up into the UFO and they probed him. Yeah, yeah. Or they, they read him, him in, or they scared him, or like they say, we keep it secret for a reason, and he just went along with it, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, all weird. Uh, but this leads into something you sent me and Bill Tompkins. Uh, which I completely forgot about him, but you sent me this article got, two years ago. Bill Tompkins was in control room when Neil Armstrong met moon reptilians. Quite the claim. Yeah. He had a lot of very interesting claims, I think you said. Yeah, he, he has a book uh, called Selected by Extraterrestrials. Um, wait, who edited it for him? He's a, he's a, he's a ufologist, uh, Michael Sala, Michael Sala edited the book for him because it wasn't well, well written. I, I recall, but I have the book really cool. He tells his life of, uh, growing up here in Southern California as a kid. And apparently he was very, um, talented and designing aircraft and designing aircraft carriers. Um, he was sent to Nazi Germany in the early, either late 30s or early 40s as a spy because they knew that they had functioning flying saucers. So we had a unit that was a Navy unit that was spying there and bringing back intelligence uh, here to the U.S. Um, so all of these guys came out, by the way, during Trump. When Trump got elected that's when the new york article <laughs> came out that's when all this disclosure started when trump was elected yeah you know it's just strange again you could talk about john trump and, and te the tesla files <laughs> i think it's just one of those things whoa that guy's president okay all bets are off let's <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah they're like okay yeah the deep state's gone let's go let's go ahead let's bring this out um, I, I just love this those first two uh paragraphs are great um, just he can be considered one of the most incredible whistleblowers to step forward. Not credible whistleblower, incredible whistleblower. <laughs> incredible. And disclose <laughs> the secret space programs, ET agendas, and hidden governments. He claimed to be part of an operation involving U.S. Navy spies who stole UFO plans and anti gravity technological secrets from the Nazis during World War II. Um, but I'd love the he worked for the Douglas Aircraft Company alongside uh, extraterrestrials, Nordic alien women. Women, yeah, yeah. Um, had been four to seven years before NASA was created. This guy he, came out, I remember now, he came out at the same time that other idiot came out. I'm not saying this guy's an idiot, because I believe him more than the other guy, the blue the blue aliens. God, what was his name? Uh, Corey Good, that guy. Yeah. Oh, my, he was the worst, man. Yeah, Corey Good or something else. He was he was a Philadelphia experience experiment guy, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And and secret space program, and he regressed 20 years and he oh, his slave on, yes. on Mars. Yes. That guy, other stuff too. Yeah, oh yeah. He worked on he was shipped to Mars as a kid, and then they yep. time regressed him back when he got back. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, his so this guy's story is just as fantastic, except. He has the receipts. He he did work for the aircraft for the uh, for wait what company was it? Um, he worked uh, for the the Douglas, U.S. Navy, Douglas Aircraft, yeah, and Navy. So they have his Navy stuff too, and he was a spy with the Navy. So all that stuff checks out. It's not like it doesn't. I mean, even with even with Lazar, it doesn't you know you can't find anything with this guy. They did. Um, so he goes here. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'll I'll, I'll wrap up with something else. All right, so according to Tompkins, the Nazis were in contact with extraterrestrial reptilians, of course, because they're the bad guys. Uh -huh. At the same time as Orsic was uh, doing her channeling, Hitler found out about Orsic, her abilities, and the fact she was receiving. Orsic, I think, wait a minute. Is this go back to the Thule Society? Um, I know, that's kind of what I was Vril, saying. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Vril Society. Vril Society. Yeah. Um, according to Tompkins, Hitler allowed Orsic and the Nordics with whom she was working to continue to work on their UFO program because the Nazis were already in contact with the reptilians. Now, Hermann Oberth, which is one of the fathers of rocketry, also said that they were helped by other worlds uh, with technology. Interesting. So they, they bring up Robert Wood here, which we brought up last week. Uh, Robert Wood is um, the owner of MajesticDocuments.com. He was given 
money to to here it is yeah he was given five hundred thousand dollars to disseminate ufo documents and two hundred fifty thousand dollars to make a ufo documentary this is dr wood and his son ryan yeah we talked about ryan last mm -hmm. week scanned mm -hmm. hundreds of mj12 documents so anyway Tompkins, I recommend getting the book selected by extraterrestrials. It's a fun book. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. So yeah. what I was going to say, so first I'm going to talk about a TV show because that's what I do. And I'm going to mm -hmm. wrap it back into this. I, I watched this TV show recently. It started off really good and then it ended poorly because it's based on a Stephen King book. And we all know that guy cannot write an ending to save his life. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's called The Outsider. It's pretty good. But anyway, one of the, it, it starts as like a murder mystery and it turns into like a supernatural um, almost horror but campy anyway okay. one of the, the main character who's like this hard-nosed detective who has no interest in the supernatural um he finally is starting to believe that this is going supernatural and he's talking to some of the other people involved with him he's going how do you deal with this and they go you just do it in small bites you don't have to accept all of it at once you just take small bites uh -huh. of it yeah. and it's kind of like bill Tompkins. i feel like reading all of his claims he should have released it in small bites it's and not small, the whole thing the whole because thing. Yeah. The whole thing makes it look like a crazy story. But if well, he, he was dying too, right? I think he died two years after he. Yeah, released. that's what it said. And I, I'm yeah. not even sure that works because if you do release stuff in small bites, um, like who was doing that a couple oh, years man, ago? He's too much of a womanizer because you know, just thinking back now, like the book was a lot about that, like about women, and then he got interviewed by Cassidy. I forget her first name. But it, now. Just, it, um, it just makes it seem like you're hiding stuff on her or, or making yeah. stuff up if you release it in small bites. Academy, oh, of the, Academy of the Stars was doing that. They they talked about releasing stuff in small bites instead of releasing the whole thing. Yeah. But, because it'll be in the book that you have to purchase for $59.99. <laughs> well, do you remember the DOD did a press release, I think a couple of weeks ago, saying that they're going to start releasing or declassifying technology? I, um, yeah. Yeah. Or a secret, they said secret space program technology. Yeah. We'll so, see. If, uh, yeah. Well, this came out about uh from lockheed martin it's a two minute video i sent this to you uh, uh but here let's, let's let's watch it it's, it's crazy do things like embed the carbon nanotubes to make conductive uh structure so that information doesn't flow through a wire next to a structure but literally flows through the structure we'll be able to grow or make a structure that say is the skin of an aircraft that inside of that is also contained the sensors or the energy storage or many different multiple functions. New materials that are on the uh, lab bench right now, they can literally change shape on command. They can become almost a muscular material. Roswell. We could have an airplane that optimizes its shape for the different flight conditions it's in. There's definitely a lot of amazing technology that's going on. The, the Lockheed Samurai, based on a small maple seed-like looking device. The fact that we can package enough energy for something like that to fly and still carry a sensor, a camera, uh, enough control capability for it to fly is amazing to me. As we go forward, we're gonna find new ways of using these unmanned vehicles they'll probably be autonomous. So they'll be like UAVs, but carry cargo around where there are currently no infrastructure in place. We may have small swarms of small vehicles interacting with a larger vehicle that, that basically oh, like uh, combines mothership. the information mm -hmm. from that swarm. So maybe one vehicle flies a small distance and another vehicle learns from it and knows which way to fly Probably what makes sense is a heterogeneous swarm, one where not every element of the swarm is the same. Some elements of the swarm carrying sensors, some carrying other types of electronics. So it's an adaptable system that can adapt to a changing environment and a changing future that is difficult for us to predict. The true value of research is not in the answer you get that you knew you were looking for but the answer that you find that you didn't know to look for. Yeah, it's always been them, guys. It's always been them. I, that's what they try and tell us. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm sure a lot of it is, though. Guys. I mean, I'm sorry, not in the 1800s, not in the 1700s, not in the 1600s. Right. You know, not, not even, yeah. But yeah, recently, 
you know, once they started shooting them down and probably meeting with them and saying, all right, stop, you know, we, we got this or, all right, you know, we'll give you a base here or you can infiltrate our, our, our uh, society here. You can study some people, but, you know, stop infiltrating our airspace. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that's why we don't see that much anymore since, I don't know, 90s or, you know, there's some that come in once in a while that like come into like airspace or airports like chicago when was that 2006 um they get a lot of sightings in chicago i mean we, we were just talking yeah. about a few few well, i guess it's been a couple months now uh we were talking about the flap that was going down in columbia and everyone was seeing those ufos yeah that's right columbia so i guess places that don't really shoot them down but you know pretty much this you know with, with this cyber system that we have in outer space always monitoring the planet um you know, it's, I mean, the globe is owned. You know, there's not many countries that are not in the system right. um, or given access to it. So that's why I, don't, I think we don't see as much as we did back in the past. It's just locked down. We've caught up a lot, you know, from this video. If Lockheed's releasing this now, they've had it for 20, 30 years easily. Mm -hmm. So meta, meta materials that can grow, no wires. It's literally just it's like it's like a living being and these have been reports of the roswell crash for decades that it was like a living being like an ai being the beings inside were connected to it you know so it's like a biological thing mm -hmm. so here here it is that actually i'm, I'm starting to see that uh, a lot more traction in stories like that where the actual ufo itself is its own being it's not like a what we you know it's not the equivalent of an airplane or a um, a, a ship, right. you know, it's right. its own entity that carries other yeah. entities inside of it, and that's why it needs it needs another it needs intelligence or a biological intelligence to hook up to it mm -hmm. and make it work. You know, it's not just um, it, or it can be autonomous. You know, in in that sense, but there's always been reports that these things are biological, especially the Roswell craft was. Well, and, you know, we've we've showed several uh, videos on our show about like the triangle UFOs, and it's always the same thing from the people who see them. They they always go, it feels like it was staring back at me. Yeah, so weird. So you sent me this one about the pen Pandora's box this is from 2009. I remember reading this when it came out. Um, everyone, it was a mystery satellite that was yeah. on. Yeah. No one knew who, what it was. Right. What it, no, and what no it one did. no one claimed any ownership of it. Yeah. On September 8th, Lockheed Martin successfully launched an Atlas V from Cape Canaveral, carrying an, a very unusual satellite into orbit. Less than two weeks before launch, neither the, neither the company nor the government would announce what kind of satellite it was. But a press release issued on September 4th stated that it was a communication satellite. What mm -hmm. makes it so unusual is that no government agency claims ownership of the satellite. This is unprecedented. Even the secretive National Reconnaissance Office acknowledges the satellite that it owns. Right. Oh. And it raises some intriguing questions about what is going on. Satellite, oh, or at I least thought, launch. I thought it was NRO. Yeah, sorry. The satellite, or at least the notch, the launch was named PAN, P A N. A few weeks before the launch, on the official launch patch, was placed for sale on eBay, and it was revealed that PAN stood for Palladium at Night, a mm -hmm. phrase that is equally confusing. I'm just going to zoom through <laughs> this. Mom, I'll read it in my head, see if there's anything worth reading out loud. Yeah, I remember. I thought it would be like the NRO, but they're saying they would usually. So it's probably a private entity because they're not. They don't need to disclose because uh, it's not government. Yeah, but it's still like even if it's a private entity, I feel like they would happily disclose that because it makes them look good, boost that stock price up a little bit. Yeah, uh, Lockheed Martin. They talk about that we have successfully hit every milestone. Uh, what's this? Uh, also, in 2008, the U.S. Navy's leadership was becoming concerned that their UFO communication satellite constellation was degrading rapidly and the replacement multi-user objective systems satellites would not be ready in time. This would result in a critical gap of capabilities. The Navy announced that it was seeking to put a UFO transponder on a commercial satellite to cover the gap, but canceled its plans in 2009. It might be that then. I mean, cancels yeah. its plan doesn't mean anything. Um, I, I mean, I just get the feeling this is secret U.S. government stuff. It all because yeah. it always is. It always is. Right. And you know, Cape Cape Canaveral is a very um, popular launch site for the U.S. So, right. So classified communication, CIA, all that stuff. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, Scary though. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, you sent me this too. This video. 
Which one is this from again? Sweden. So apparently filmed in Sweden in night vision. I do not know if it's real or fake, but it has been going viral for a couple of days. Um, there's a similar one that came out too, but we saw pictures of it, I think, in Chile. Yes. Oh, that's so, right. And here's that thing. See how that on mm -hmm. the bottom there? Yeah, very, very cl weirdly clear uh, video. Um, very clear. I mean, this can't be mistaken for a bird or a plane or Superman. Um, no. It's just a very odd. It looks, I was going to say, it looks like a saucer with like a fin sticking out the bottom. Um, it, translucent it, looks, here. it almost wings. looks like it's got wings, like it's flying yeah, the wings down. Are translucent. Well, you think it's like one of those big bugs? What are those, those dune bugs? No. I don't think I don't think it's a bug. I know, I'm kidding. But look, look how it's uh, look how it's translucent though. The wings are. Yeah, I mean, again, this is using night vision, so it's in. And it has that appendix. Yeah, appendage. I mean, appendage. Very. It's kind of, clearly it's going fast. Um, yeah, just a couple days ago on the fifth of February. So it's pretty much flat, huh? Not really cigar because it's yeah. not a blimp. It looks like a blimp from this angle. Right. But then it flattens Yeah, when it kind of goes away, you can kind of see it's circular shaped. Yeah. Or those are wings. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Very, very clear, very cool footage. Yeah. And then and then this came Could in. Could be a Russian drone. I'm saying that. When I oh, yeah. Or Chinese. <laughs> no, I, I was being serious. I mean, Sweden's right up there next to Russia. But this one looks really similar. And you sent this to me. Yeah, could it be the same thing? A couple of snaps, pics of flying saucer on road trip. You had to see it to believe it. I think this is in Chile, right? Um, Argentina. 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 So it looks very, very similar. Very. So from one angle, it looks like a blink. From a blimp, from another angle, it looks like a flying saucer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're yeah, excited about it though. He goes again, a very, very clear photo, and it's you know not plane shaped. I mean, and yeah, technically, I guess it's blimp shaped, but blimps don't look like that, really. No, they're not so well, pointy on the ends. Let's see what they say. He snapped a photo of the oval shaped object as it headed towards some mountains. I noticed it was the same height as the power cables. Oh, oh, really? Oh, it was small. Hmm. I would assume it's just higher. Oh, but when I saw it going higher and higher, she recalled, she showed the snaps to her grandchildren who were in awe of the images. I needed to see this in my life. You had to see it to believe it. Hmm. Uh, this stunning sighting occurred not far from the mysterious Brazil's Roswell, which is the subject of a 2022 documentary. Huh. Oh. Oh. Virginia. Or, for what's it called? That Virginia. Would... Is it? Yeah, Hecklefish always made fun of that name. Oh, uh, of course he did. <laughs> did you like the new wife files? It was really good. I was hoping we could talk about that at some point in the show. Uh, yeah, it was the, the, Knights the nice Templar. Templar. Yeah. American mainstream American scientist Bruce E. Rapuano goes on the record with his own UFO close encounters and alien abduction experiences in a newly released book a scientist own alien abduction encounters called dominion lost by bruce e rapuano phd he Very goes cool. on the record oh yeah. well, you can get it if you got kindle unlimited it's free oh nice Oh, maybe I'll get that. The book explains how the implants that are frequently reported by abductees work to analyze and influence the in the activity of the human brain. That's what's going on with me. That's exactly how the quote unquote gray aliens were genetically re-engineered from our early hominin ancestors. Hmm. And precisely Can I how say the hominin. UFO... Huh? Should no, I say hominin. hominin. No, hominin like uh Homo sapien. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, precisely how the UFO propulsion system creates gravitational wave energy is another oh, really? huh? another thing that's discussed in the book. Wow. So pretty cool. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Did you see this? So this, this is coming out night in from Richard Geldreich on X. Such a great account. He's always researching. He, he tries so hard to get away from the drama and stay away from the drama. Like Kirk, Kirk Smart. Patrick and all that. So he just researches. Yeah. So he found at newspaper.com flying saucer replica found in ancient temple. So uh, is this showing? Okay. Flying saucer replica found in ancient temple. London, November 30th, uh, 1953, I think, right? We moderns aren't the only ones plagued by flying saucers. 
British archaeologists on the Isle of Cyprus reported to London today that they had unearthed a ruined temple. In the temple, they found a small stone seal. John de Platt, expedition leader, said one seal bore the replica of what was definitely a winged disc. Age of this antique flying saucer? About 3,000 years. Yeah. We love that stuff, right? I absolutely do. Historical <laughs> UFO, like ancient, not ancient, but historical UFOs are some of my favorite accounts. Like, you know, the Roman armies will see a, a yeah. fiery chariot come down from the heavens. And it's just like, it's that kind of stuff fascinates me. Um, so I want to link MJ-12 this. documents. Yeah, the MJ-12 documents. Uh, these are coming out again because of the National Archives. So apparently one of these or a couple of these were in there. Because, you know, you know, the UAP Disclosure Act, it was gutted, yes. But the only mm-hmm. thing left there was the National Archives that all agencies with any documents older than 25 years old have to release them. So the National Archives now is is putting stuff in there. And some of these are in there. So cool. I know, right? So Kirk, and is that why Kirkpatrick is out doing this stuff? You know? Maybe. So, so yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Majestic 12... Um, was largely considered a myth until one of the famous UFO researchers found some of these documents, right? Yeah, uh, uh the doctor, I know, oh my god, nuclear physicist, uh, very, very, very famous. Come on, <laughs> yeah, 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 the one of very, the famous ones, <laughs> yeah, one of the I want to say, the... say hi, Nick, but it's not that. Um, anyway. Um, he made a whole, you know, I don't think he started his career with the MJ 12 documents, no, but no, he made no, a no, big chunk of his no. career off the MJ 12 documents. And now the fact that we're seeing them being released by other companies is very, or not companies, these other organizations, very interesting. Yeah. And this is before FOIA. So now a lot of agencies after FOIA was released, when was it passed? I don't know, late sixties, early seventies. When was Carter? I think he did FOIA, right? I think so. So before that, these agencies had no idea this stuff would come out. So that's what these documents are. Now, I mean, or since then, they know about FOIA, so they shut up about things. They don't, you know, they know that eventually something might come out. So they don't talk as candidly as they did back then. So these documents, the older ones, are just so much more, like, look at this, flying saucer intelligence. Um, here it talks about Majestic SSP, so Secret Space Program. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just absolutely not so stuff. If if this is all, and that's the thing I keep going back and forth in my head about. Like, is this just faked release just to get us to be talking about this, and it's not real? Well, that's the thing though, because they did not know back then. You know, so here it is: National Archives tees up new rules for UFO records. Um, and because it was before FOIA, they weren't supposed to be released. They had no idea. Mm-hmm. You know, FOIA forced them to be released. But yes, I mean you're right. I mean some have some have been burned. So the ones that haven't been burned, is it on purpose? Right. So new legislation mandates a government-wide repository of records dealing with unidentified anomalous phenomena. Um. So here's an article just just reiterating that, which is really cool. And here I want to show this document showed up. This is one of the ones that showed up. Oh, yeah, you sent this to me. Oh, wait, here we go. Friedman. Richard Friedman. Yeah, yeah, or... or, or this is Satin Friedman. Stanford, Stanford, yeah, Satin Friedman. My bad, Richard Friedman. <laughs> 1954. Oh, this is the general twining, twinning um, memo, which says MJ-12 on it. The president has decided that the MJ-12 SSP, Secret Space Program briefing, should take place during the already scheduled White House seating of July... Meeting meeting of july 16th rather than following it as prob- previously intended rather than what following it as, here you read it okay um okay. oh hold on the president has decided that the mj-12 S- ssp briefing should take place during the already scheduled white house meeting of july 16th rather than following it as previously intended ah. more precise okay. arrangements will be explained to you upon arrival please alter your plans accordingly your concurrence in the above change of arrangements is assured. So it's not so right there. It's just showing that there is a secret space program that MJ twelve is real, and these are in the national archives. Pretty cool stuff, man. Yeah. So, Mister Kirkpatrick and whoever else you are saying there's 
no evidence and and uh, claims needs. Yeah, but I read a CNN article that said that aliens aren't real. <laughs> and of course, this happens. This is according to Space Out Radio. Breaking news: Mufon is under major hack right now. It's good I never paid for that package, huh? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's all gone apparently. Really? Yeah, sources indicate the hacker has taken over and locked everyone out of their CMS database. The attack has come from an IP address within the eastern USA. Data has been compromised. All gone. All wow. Gone. There goes the evidence that we would like to uncover and show everyone that there's lots of evidence out there. Man, oh man. It's not crazy. Dude, I'll just frustrating. It's like they only want the National Archives to have it. You know, yeah. just one source. Such a shame. It is a shame. And what, are they going to refund everyone? Because I think it was like 350 bucks. I was seriously this close of getting it. And that, that you know, each week will dedicate like 10, 15 minutes to mm -hmm. do stuff found on there. But it's gone now. Jeez. I feel, you know, if I did buy it, I probably would have downloaded everything I saw. Yeah, that's, I knew that would happen. that's smart. Um, All so right, so really Jeff cool. Bezos has spent forty-two million dollars building a clock that will outlast human civilization in a mountain in Texas. And That's my really biggest cool. question yeah. is yeah. why? Yeah, what does he know? Well, well, uh, it doesn't when I was matter. This, I had some thoughts going uh, in my head, like while watching this, I'm like, you know, this entire civilization is built on time. Um, everything, right? Our computers, yeah. our, our communication systems, we have GPS, all of that is based on just time. And maybe that's why, you know, if this one is gone and at least we'll have this to start out with. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess, but really our time is based on the, the sun. Yeah, we've the sun and the moon. Yeah. We've figured out that the sun... Um, well, mostly the moon. And then it the takes sun. 24 hours for the sun to go around, or the earth to go around the sun. Or I'm sorry. It takes 24 hours for the earth to completely rotate so the sun is in the same place in the sky. That's how we figured that out, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And, the, well, and then the moon gave us months. The reason right. why we know what months are is because the moon because it's 29 days, you know, 30 yeah. days, whatever. So um, I don't understand how this, if, if we can't use the sun and the moon to figure out what the time. Well, maybe it's a jump means, start. That means the earth is completely boned anyway because if the, obviously if the sun and the moon don't exist earth is not well say say civilization has to re restart it it means you have to, you have to have people with enough time to sit there and watch it all over again and watch we it did for that. Oh, you, know, don't, you don't even have to sit there and watch not it that's civilization what, is destroyed you won't have that's that what, that's what a sun like, dude that's what a sundial is you put a stake in the ground you mark where the shadow is and then you wait until that shadow comes or this shadow comes back around and you go boom that's 24 hours and it's then you just break it down there and like, and, uh, and look at it and 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 the constellations you have to map it to that and you have to map it to the moon and and the clock know, doesn't this this it's more intricate i don't know I, this i don't i just this seems like weird cabal ritual shit because i i honestly i can't i i, I don't know i don't buy that how I can't, far deep in the mountain is it do we know does it show us and that's the other thing. Let's say civilization does crumble. Who the hell is going to be able to get to this clock? Please, this is going to follow video. Our marketing lead posted no, this. No, what's on an You're reading oh. an ad. You know, must SpaceX continues. This will fuck up. This is what? Tesla? No, it's not Tesla at all. Oh, this guy's great. To do with it. A bunch of what is idiot wrong Redditors with arguing about something that has nothing to do with this video. I wish, like, is there a release about this video? Here, I'm going to look it up. I haven't seen anything. I just thought this was really, really dumb and weird, and I, I don't I don't get it. Bezos um, uh, Clock Mountain. Welcome to the 10,000-year clock. Oh, it's a website. It's called 10,000-year clock. Okay. Can you see this? Can you see it? Yeah, we are building a 10,000-year clock. It's a special clock designed to be a symbol and icon for long-term thinking. Okay, so it's just an art project. Uh, it's a monumental scale inside a mountain in West Texas. The father of the clock is Danny Hillis. He's been thinking about and working on the clock since 1989. He wanted to build a clock that ticks once a year, uh, where the century hand advances once every 100 years, and the cuckoo comes out on the millennium. Okay. The vision was right. and still is to build a clock that will keep time for the next 10,000 years. Oh, okay. 
All right. So it's an Bezos art paid for this. It's an art project. That's all it is. <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Thanks for your interest in the clock. Sincerely, Jeff Bezos. You got to love these billionaires, huh? Yeah. So dumb. <laughs> what a waste of time and resources. $42 million. It's, I swear, <laughs> that's what they say art is, uh, is money laundering. It is. I still am convinced that it is. All right, so we're at, we're almost at an hour and a half. So, an engineer accused of stealing secret U.S. government tech used to detect nuclear missile launches. I sent this to you. You're like, before I opened it, I knew it was a Chinese guy. Of course, yeah. <laughs> of course, I, I, yeah, I was like, this has got to be from China. Chinese stealing secrets again. Big surprise there. Dangerous. I know I laughed, but this is really dangerous. Like, if China knows how we detect missile launches and nuclear missile launches, you mm -hmm. know. But are we throwing them a bone? Are we doing a psy up with them? Yeah, make them think that they've they yeah you know they know that they know how we discover nuke launches, but we've got a secret other way. Right, right. And this is a big deal that's been going on this week. Um Tucker Carlson and Putin. And is this is the video that, that came before, like why he's doing it. I think at this point the whole world's seen it. I think two hundred million people have seen the interview and many people have like commented on it and the only thing i'm going to say is is that i think he's a K putin is a kgb agent we have to think about that uh he had an agenda one he That's wanted cool. to show that he's got brains and that our president doesn't that's what he was trying to do with the whole history thing like oh let's go to 1600 and 1700 <laughs> he's just trying to show that his brain works yeah you know Right, and it, 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 that's all he's doing is rubbing it in and rubbing it in. What am I supposed to do? Call Biden and say, "Oh, please don't pay, don't send missiles to us." What am I, right? He said that. Yeah. Um, what was another thing that, that that's that? Oh, that we're and oh, oh yeah, and that we're destroying our dollar ourselves by weaponizing it. You know, that's what basically I got from it. I mean, I. What do you think? I I know. Well, I think. I think Putin is a corrupt, evil piece of shit. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I, I, I also think Ukraine is a very complicated issue, much more complicated than um, people seem to to realize. Because there are people, and a lot of people in Ukraine who want to be back a part of Russia. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I think. Yeah. Go is ahead. that worth? Is that worth going to war and killing? You know, a whole generation. I what about our border? What about our border? Yeah. Is that is that worth you know us sending so much money over there and everyone else sending the money and support? You know, I I I don't think so. But it's it's not. I don't know. I, I I do think Putin's smart, but I do think he's evil. I think he's essentially Lex Luthor. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's good for Russia. You he, know what I mean? Yeah, and he, um, he you know he kills anyone who speaks out against him. Um, he does. Yeah. He obviously he's feels comfortable. Term or he obviously feels comfortable having Tucker interview him because Tucker is. Uh, on the right and is not so critical of Russia as other journalists. And he'll do. get, and he'll get the views. I think he picked someone that would get the hundred plus million views, you know, yeah. because at the end of the day, I mean, we saw how CNN plus ended up, you know, they folded within a week because no one watches yeah. and no one cares. <laughs> it's something we, I love. Like there's gotta be a percentage of, of CNN quote unquote viewership. That's just like TVs on at airports or like at the gym. Oh yeah. It, it, it was 30% of their revenue at some point was yeah. the airports and hotels that were yeah. paying CNN, not people watching it. It was just right. on the background. Um, pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but definitely, you know, it's good. He did real journalism. He went, he interviewed him, which was good. Uh, I think Putin dominated, you know, he and as usual. And, you know, watching the interview, I, I still think uh, I did, you, you know, and I, you pointed out Tucker did push back on a couple of things. Um, yeah. or called you know quite but you know you can't push too far because then you know you you, you disappear off the face of the earth as soon as you <laughs> leave the room with putin that's the other yeah. thing i think it's good though that he said you know we do want to negotiate peace it's all sad it's all disgusting hundreds of thousands of ukrainians have died and for what oh you know we sent the money and weapons just to enable that a peace could have been negotiated a long time ago without those hundreds of thousands of people dying yeah I mean, you know? war war is really stupid. Uh, war is for young people to die so rich people can continue to be rich. That's all it is. That's yeah, all. It's a racket. All, yeah, that's always what it has been. And war is a racket. It's what it always will be. It's all really right. So let's 
maybe really let's important. go into some comedy. So I, I did send you uh, this since we're talking yeah. about weaponizing the U.S. dollar. Uh, <laughs> listen to this guy. He's he's from the Fed. He's I think one of the Fed chiefs, or he's on the board. Uh, Kashkari. Look at this guy. There is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. And there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. And there. Oh, look at his eyes. I know how he's got scary <laughs> eyes, man. That there's... reminds me. Uh, I need to send you something that is completely relevant to <laughs> this video. We will do whatever we need to do. To what about the Fed? Cash the no. The way his eyes look, I'm sending. Oh, it to you. like reptilians kind of thing. No, 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 no. Oh. Check, check your signal. Maybe you can pull it up. Oh, okay. Um, well, he talked him. But this guy, I mean, that is that's not a thousand. Uh, yard, that's not a thousand yard stare. That's a thousand <laughs> mile like laser eyes. I don't know. Well, it's, it's scary because he's, on, he's yeah. so he's like so excited that the the Fed has infinite amount of money. He can't contain his excitement. <laughs> Did you get that? Money, and we will make sure that we'll have the amount of cash needed. I mean, it's like, dude, like yeah. relax, man. Pull up, uh, pull up that, yeah. that picture if you can. One second, almost there. I gotta do this. Yeah, and we can. I can't do a side by side, but we can. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a, it's a chart of different eyes, you know. Sh like if there's an eyelid drooping, you know, there's stress. Um, if there's a lot of pressure, if the eyes look a certain way, and then the, the, the bottom, the <laughs> eyes wide open. If you can see the white above the iris, these are the eyes of a psychopathic killer. These eyes want to gain power of you, and that's exactly yes. Look, <laughs> it looks it, it's identical. It looks just <laughs> like that. Oh my god, dude. The eyes of a psychopathic killer. These eyes want to gain power of yeah. No shit. And that's why the guy's a chief in the Fed. Yeah. They they put these guys there. We'll do whatever we have to do. Now, you know, I've I've listened to many economists and, and uh throughout the years, and they even said COVID was made by the central bankers to make sure that we have the cash, that they had to do it, you know, to print all that money. Anyway, that's another thing. But yeah, see, he's saying they'll do whatever they need to do. Even they say 9-11 was about that. All right, see, so he's some more funnies. Well, don't forget about Lucky Larry. Uh I think yeah, yeah, we got there. That's the, that'll be at the end. I got lucky later, don't Richard I? Doty, welcome. Thank you, Jimmy. Good to be here. Did you think that we would arrive at this moment? No, no, not at all. If we were able to capture, say, for instance, an <laughs> and even, we would have to set up different facilities in order for them to adapt and, and live on our on our planet. They were from different places. The Ebens, we know they came from Zeta Reticuli. Uh, the Archaloids <laughs> came from another uh, star group. The Quantaloids, they're all different. And they look different. <laughs> Intense. <laughs> Richard Doty, welcome. Oh, that's Cosmic Judas. Oh, he's hilarious, that man. Not at the so end. It's just yeah, the lick at the end. <laughs> oh, man, I'm tearing. All right, you sent me this. This is so funny, dude. This is so <laughs> funny. So what's this from? I, I, I've never seen this. Yeah, I hadn't either. Someone, I, I saw it on Reddit someplace. So apparently it's the show. It's called... Oh no! The what show is, is not here. It's not on the YouTube. It's it's, it's not on YouTube, but you, there's clips of it on YouTube. Me. But basically, what they do is they take comedians and they dress them up. Oh, um, Denzel they dress them up here? in secret so that they can't know what they look like. And then right before they get interviewed, they're allowed to see with themselves, and so they have no prep time essentially, and they have to ad lib an interview with this woman who's actually really funny. All right, this is really funny. Let's, let's, let's watch this. Don't be afraid, but if you are aroused, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, but who is that? He seems so familiar. Anyway. I know. I recognize. I recognize you know? the voice, but I don't know who yeah. it is. Okay. Need food for sustenance? Is that? No, no. See, we have uh, our skin sucks in the, the both the moon and the sun and feeds us huh, much well, like uh, the moon. For, uh, and I'm again. What do I know? I'm just a human. Yeah. Uh, the the light from the moon is the light from the sun. So I basically take you know most of my energy from the sun. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. 
Fascinating. Yeah. Was it true that you are coming to populate this planet? Because it doesn't seem like you've taken any steps to do that well, so look, far. I got here. I, I, I looked up your pornography to see how to romance you. I'm That's sorry, Denzel. Hilarious. Are you using pornography to see how to woo people here on Why Earth? Why would you record yourself having sex if it is in the tutorial? Like, that makes no sense. Denzel, what is that for? It's for pleasure. It's for fantasy. That's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Why is that fucked up? Because that's, like, that's love, you know? That's like the creation of another child. If I think it's for, for pleasure and then you move on. Well, you keep saying pleasure. What is that? <laughs> what is pleasure? Yeah. Who you know, I don't, <clears throat> I don't really, um, I don't really know. Okay, Denzel, if you are Denzel. here to, in fact, repopulate the earth, I am going to give you this time right now to explain your mission to the entire audience. Wouldn't we like that? Yes. Go ahead, Denzel. Was that two people? We have this alien tradition of where I come from, mm -hmm. where the two people who like raised you have expectations of you. Because of those expectations, if you say you're going to go off and do something, they expect it to get done. Wait, let's pause it. I hope because you know we get a strike. Hopefully, we won't get a strike. You know, it no, seems kind this, of no, 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 no. You're not gonna, this. This clip is on YouTube, and they haven't been struck down. Oh, this okay, isn't. Right. This isn't from the official show. Okay, sorry. Know about it. Parental pressure. Uh, some viewers wrote in, and so we have a few questions for you. We'd like some of your opinions on of other things. Your opinion on hand sanitizer. Toxic to my skin. Really? Funny enough, yeah. Uh, How is it toxic to your skin? Uh, it hurts when I use it. Do you happen to have open cuts on your hand <laughs> as you're putting on the hand sanitizer? Yeah, how do you know? All right, Denzel. <laughs> your opinion on roller coasters. Why would I be afraid of a roller coaster? I'm not saying you're afraid of roller coasters. I'm asking if you've been on a roller coaster. And I'm asking why would I be afraid of a roller coaster? I'm not saying you're afraid, of, but it's seeming like maybe you're afraid of roller that coasters. That go faster than those roller coasters. <laughs> So <laughs> the show is called the very uh, important and people, sh the very, very important people show. Very important people show. That's hilarious. Man. There's a bunch that more clips so from that. That's really funny. But basically the whole, the whole joke is, is that the alien is essentially just like every other human. There's, there's one little clip where she's like, so what do you, you know, do you prefer the heat or the cold? And he goes, well, we have these alien garments that, you know, when we're cold, we wear the lighter garments so we don't get so hot. And or if we're if we're too hot, you know, you know, we lose the heavier garments, so we cool down. And she and if we're cold, we put on heavier garments, we warm up. And she goes, "You mean like a sweater?" The whole joke is that the alien doesn't realize that he's exactly the same as the humans. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really good bit. I mean, that makes sense, especially with the sun and the moon one. Yeah, he's like, "I I said you get from the sun, then." Yeah, you mean like us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just oh, I'm just a human. Maybe I don't know, but it's the sun's. The moonlight is just a reflection of the sun. Yeah, yeah I take my food from the sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, good comedy today. All right, well, yeah. this week. Well, so who... Uh, oh, did you see that one uh, MMA guy? They ask him, and they're like... Uh, you know how they always interview them up there with, with the whole MMA thing? They always have sunglasses on. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I forget who it was. And they're like, Chiefs? Chiefs or 49ers? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 That's all he says. <laughs> so... I, my question to you, uh, Chiefs or 49ers? Well, 49ers. I, I I said it last week too. I hate the Chiefs. As a, as a Broncos now, as Broncos yeah. fan, I'm I'm very opposed to the Chiefs being as successful as that. I'm with you. I'm they, with you. They don't deserve now, it. Now people that say that it's rigged or it's political, which football really is, and you know we got Taylor Swift. People are oh. saying, oh, she is she is a true American treasure, and the WEF wants to use her for their propaganda. Now, do you think because of all that? That they're gonna make Chiefs win because it will elevate her even more. Not not just to her fan base and that that demographics, but now to the football demographics. You know, um, I don't know. I think there's a lot more more stuff to it. <clears throat> First of all, anyone who's watched the NFL last couple of years knows that the NFL heavily favors the teams who are popular. That's why the Patriots always got all yeah. the calls when they were popular. The yeah. Chiefs have been really popular these last few years, and they get all the calls. I made a joke last week, and I stand by it. Oh. Kermit the Frog quarterback, if you stare at him too long, the, the refs will throw a penalty in his favor. Um, there's always been questionable calls in the NFL, but it tends to favor whatever team is the most popular. Um, 
the NFL has been trying to get they've been trying to widen their female audience for a very long time, hence the mm-hmm. breast cancer awareness stuff. Uh, have you seen real quick? Have you seen Bill Burr's bit about that? Yeah, like, I remember how, it. How yeah. dumb he thinks it's like, yeah, I'm aware breast cancer right. uh, exists. I don't need to be told that. Like, can you imagine if we're watching a movie and I pause it and I go, Hey, you know, my uncle died of, of prostate cancer. It was terrible. Anyway, let's get back to the movie. Like that's what he <laughs> equated it to. And I thought that was a really funny. Yeah, bit. Right. But anyway, yeah, right. Taylor Swift, very popular amongst women and now she is in the nfl zeitgeist right. and so by mm-hmm. showing her on the tv every goddamn chance they get the yep. nfl hopes to bring in more female viewership um i don't really believe in the whole election thing where they're going to give her a stage to support biden um mm-hmm. if they did they'd be really dumb because people who watch the nfl a people who actually care about the nfl not the the wives who are sitting next to their husbands yell at the tv yeah. you know the people who watch the nfl if they see someone like taylor swift come up and tell them that they're bigots or whatever for not voting for for biden i mean that's not going to do any anything for they're not going to gain any votes that way i mean can you where's imagine the, where's I'm, the game where's the game being played you know las vegas Oh, in Vegas! Yeah, Interesting. It's, it's, it's big, big time this year. And Ooh, I don't know if you know, they've got a new, new stadium in Vegas now. Yeah, um, it's such a cool stadium. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Me and my and, brother used to go. Uh, well, actually, not not used to go. There was two Super Bowls we went to that we didn't actually go in there, but we went to the cities that they were in, I and it will just... be in a bar nearby. Yeah, uh, yeah, it would be just as fun, just as crazy. It seems like a, an absolute nightmare, to be honest. I, <laughs> like there was one in san diego we took it tr- we took the train down oh yeah okay there you go anyway the, yeah but yeah i it'll be it'll be really telling uh how this game goes if it, the nfl is truly rigged or not yeah but we'll see I, I i'm with the 49ers too but i wouldn't be surprised if chiefs uh, on, honestly if there's any conspiracy here it's that the the rampant um betting in the nfl like you always get ads for like you know bet on your phone place a bet um yeah i see it on reddit all the time as i'm scrolling through i mean there's a lot of money that is going into um gambling and that i think that has affected the nfl more than anything oh i'm sure yeah it's it's, of course when money's involved corruption just comes in it just does every time man yeah yeah because people need more profit so you want to go for the side that had uh that has what is it um that pays you more because it was um what is that called in, in betting the, the pro is there a probability um you know if, if somebody's less of less probability of winning and you and you bet on odds yeah sorry there you go odds yeah so if the odds are you know if the odds will pay you out more that the team would usually win especially there's a lot of money mm-hmm. in it anyway that's just what yeah. happens when money's involved so anyway, um, what what did you think of the latest episode of the Y Files? Um, I mean, I've re- I mean, I know about the Knights Templar a lot. So he mentioned a lot of stuff that I already know in there. Um, what did he end it on? He he didn't really have. Well, he, a... he, he's 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 going to have the the head of the the Templar Order in for an interview. Remember, oh, he's going to bring guy, that guy in. Tim Tim, what's his name? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the history of the Knights Templar goes back you know centuries you know people think they found the the holy grail but when they came back to europe knights were uh royalty was taking loans from them so they came back with something they came back with the knowledge they came back with with wealth um but yeah then, but then the royalty flipped on them because they were um too powerful well not just yeah well either this was a lie or be, or they or because they came became too powerful that they made it up but they arrested all of them saying that they were satan worshippers and they were that they were worshiping Baphomet, um, yeah. we, and you know that that the Baphomet thing. And then they were apparently forced underground. Now I don't know if AJ covers this, but they were forced underground. He did actually. And that's, okay, and that's what created the, the Rosicrucians and 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 the and the Masons, and that's what the, that's yeah. that is the history of the Knight Templars. That's, is, that's yeah, is that which created this country, which then which then overcame the Catholic Church, and then now they're on top again. He, kind of he talked he talked about all of that actually. Um, oh, okay. And some of the really some of the interesting stuff is I didn't realize how widespread the Knights Templar were. I mean, like you just mentioned, they, they basically they had started a banking system because people kept getting robbed on the road, right? Which I had never known. So basically, these people would show up at a bank, 
deposit all their gold and they'd get a note back saying i deposited 600 gold here and then they'd go to the next town or wherever their destination was go to the bank and then pull out their gold there i mean it's not the exact right. same gold obviously but it's the same you know amount yeah and, it was it was a network i mean and they cut co- they copied the muslims from that because they did that before they yeah were, well and that's were, that's yeah. where you know that's in the early part of the episode he talks about where the, the knights templar learned it and that's yeah um, yeah, it was. It was. I thought it was really interesting, but um, it is really cool. I, I didn't. And... Yeah, the whole thing with France turning on them because they were too influential. I found that very interesting. He talked a little bit about the East India um, Tea Company, and yeah. I didn't realize how. I mean, I knew they were big. I didn't realize how big that company was. They were their own oh, global huge, country. Huge they had their own armies and shit. That, yeah, like, yeah, that is joke. crazy to me. Yeah, it was one of the first corporate, one of the first global corporations. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that was backed by a government. So that's where our corporations learned this, and where mm-hmm. our government is used and army is used to to back the interests of corporations and their profits. Yes, that the East India Company started that type of mentality. Yeah, I, it's yeah. it's it's interesting because you see all the stuff that were has come to fruition today. You see the seeds of it. You know, hundreds. Mm-hmm hundreds of years ago so it's it was a re- pretty interesting episode i thought um, very good episode and you know i think i'm going to start listening to the podcast because he says he goes down deep dives yeah i was doing that this weekend actually that's kind of oh, why nice. it up. yeah because so there's one yeah. more thing i wanted to say a few a couple months ago i went out to dinner with my parents and then a, a family member that we both share who's well traveled um mm-hmm. and i had i made an off-the-cuff comment that you know you know, I was like, don't, I didn't think they found any, any bodies in the, in the great pyramids. And she just laughed and go, of course they have, they found so many bodies. And then I went, I was listening to the podcast of the Y files and I got to the episode where that was brought up because well, to this day, no bodies have been found in the pyramids. And I was like, well, I have to check because this family member is well-traveled and very smart and she knows her stuff. And I was looking into it and I guess there, I, I'm still kind of confused. So apparently they found body parts in some of the pyramids they haven't found a full place and they f- they found where sarcophagi were supposed to be they don't know if those are sarcophagi though and and there's no yeah. hieroglyphics either <clears throat> if it was a tomb there'd be hieroglyphics there I, every other tomb has the story of whoever's buried there what's yeah. going on there's well, none of that in the pyramids so i was because i was trying to do my own research because i'm like well i'm hearing two different conflicting things here and i still haven't really gotten down to like because the common or the mainstream theory is that because the pyramids have been there so long, they've been robbed over and over and over again. And there's just yeah. nothing, there's just nothing left at this point, but it does seem like there, it, I mean, and uh, the, the tomb theory is the most, is the most mainstream theory as to yeah, what Yeah, but they that's are. not, it doesn't fit anything else though. But yeah, it does seem like there's a lot of uh, evidence lacking, but I was just like, I was so embarrassed. I had said that. And then I was like, where did I get that information? Because I know I've heard that. And then I heard it on that episode. I was like, okay, that's where I got it from. So uh, why is she, was she so adamant that bodies had been found there? Oh, that and, bodies had been found. Yeah, because that's the mainstream one. That that it was a tomb. And that, yeah, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people and, always are always adamant because the mainstream says it. And they've read it in textbooks. And they've seen it on the History Channel. And, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that's where that comes from. But no, it's definitely not a tomb. There's no hieroglyphs in there. A mummy, a mummy was not found. If it was Khufu, where was Khufu's body? Every other, you know, tomb, they're usually there with their treasures, with hieroglyphs. No hieroglyphs, no treasure. It was probably most likely either um, an energy, an energy device. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Is in the episode that I was just talking about, AJ talks about how there's a lot of evidence pointed to be it to be an energy source. Yeah, you know, they even have the cooling tunnels underneath the the roads of Rostow. Pretty yeah, yeah, and there stuff. was water there too. And yeah, 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 for sure. And then going really quick on hieroglyphics, that was the other thing that was talked about in the the, the Knights Templar um, episode was that a bunch of um, Viking runes, and the Vikings were originally some of the, some of the Templars that had been had gone underground was found like in the middle of the U.S. and dated mm-hmm. way before Columbus got here. Yeah, I'll send you another episode. Uh, this guy, his name is Analog. He's got a great YouTube channel, and he even says his pyramids here in San Diego. And well, oh, they're all over the place. Pyramids are. Yeah, I know they're all. Over, yeah, but I didn't know there's in San Diego. So in San Diego, and if you go underneath, there's there's layers and layers and layers of cities on each layer, and apparently that that's that's all over the earth where 
we've just built on different civilizations that get buried or they get destroyed. Whoever the remnants come back and they build yeah. on top of this city, mm-hmm. and that's everywhere. Even um, there's a really famous city, is it Bruges in Europe, where you can see the old country and like the the whole the whole city is like two layer because you've got the old town and then they just kept building on top of it and you can yeah. see where like has it modernized it's pretty interesting greece is like the, yeah greece whenever there's like some huge project they always find stuff when they dig it's, um, yeah I, I love human history man it's so interesting to me yeah and we're not we're not the only one they love that's the mainstream thing that's what they try to pigeonhole us in is that we evolved here this is when and then the cradle of civilization happened here in Iraq mm-hmm. and Israel and Pal- you know that area only in Egypt and and now our leaders who are at the top of this civilization are the most advanced ever and the only mind you there's never been civilizations before that and that's what they don't like they don't like the evidence that there was multiple civilizations human civilizations before this one that have been destroyed either on purpose or cataclysms and there's been a rebuilding that always happens and we live in one right now that's been rebuilt and it kind of you know uh lots of researchers say that was remnants of the people that left over from atlantis those families gave those secrets to egypt and babylon um and 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 in south South america and central america too yeah all of them yeah exactly yeah i I, yeah that's a really common story Mm. and um something that i i learned a lot about after visiting mexico i think i talked about this last week right going to going to go see a a chichen itza and all that stuff and reading about Mm -hmm. the history there and they talk about how they're one of their gods came out of the ocean and taught them how to farm and taught them, you know, to track how to track the weather and stuff. Just like um, Samaria, yeah. And it's you know, and it's something that AJ has talked about on many episodes that once Atlantis fell, everyone spread out and restarted civilization all over the world. Yeah, and it'll probably happen again, like when this one is gone. You know, we have all these deep military underground bases. <laughs> Same thing; they'll just rise up, and then whoever, whoever remnants are on Earth again, you know, they'll be uncivilized and like, "All right, right. here you go. Here's <laughs> math. Here's music. Here's blah blah blah." Same families, probably. Well, I'm just la- <laughs> I'm just laughing because, like, first of all, I thought of that. Um, it's it's a meme about a guy. Who, it's showing a guy who's talking to like clearly like ancient like um, people in the <laughs> Middle East and. And then he finishes his speech, and someone from the audience goes, "Okay, so how do we make electricity?" Because <laughs> he's like <laughs> holding up an iPhone or something. And I'm just imagining that you know our country or our whole world falls, and where humans are spread to the corners of the planet, and people separately go to them and go, "This is an iPhone. You, you can order pizza on it." And they go, "Well, who, who do we order pizza from? How do we turn the phone on?" And I go, "I don't know how to do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's there's so much more to our history. That's for sure. All right, All right, cool. Real, well, episode real quick, 58. Yeah, go ahead. I, I want to bust through uh, Topher's Media Corner. Uh, True Detective sucks this season. I can't stand it. Uh, oh, no. Season two of Halo is on TV now, and it's much better than the first season. Still not great. Um, shoot, I had a movie in mind to recommend to everybody, but I... Oh, I did not like Underwater, by the way. Hey, you we're did? getting two hours, Matt. No, I didn't. I did not like that at all. Why not? I just didn't, dude. The whole thing, it just seemed totally normal. Or like, you know, like there was no, nothing deep, nothing deep in there. It was just noisy. It was. Oh, man. No, I was. Know? It was Cthulhu, I like man. It. I didn't like it. Uh, well, can't please <laughs> everyone, I guess. I, yeah, it just seemed normal. That's all. Yeah, like a typical, it seemed like a typical, whatever the genre is, is what I felt when I was watching it. So you were expecting more like, what do you, what do you, like, what were you looking for? Uh, I can't tell you. I just didn't, I guess they just didn't drive, I guess. Whatever, man. I think you, got, <laughs> I think you, got poor, you can't win them all. <laughs> poor taste in movies. Ah, <laughs> yeah, sure. It's called user error. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> we're almost in two hours. Let's wrap this up. Uh, we yeah. want to thank you all so much for joining us on the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. That is, I want to believe Adam. All right, everybody, you got to follow us on Twitter, please, on X, UAP, the podcast. Share our YouTube. I know all you guys are listening on, on the podcasting platforms. Why don't you go on YouTube? Check this out. See how it looks, you know? We're sharing stuff. We're watching videos. We're reading, um, you know? So go to, on YouTube at Uncovering Anomalies Podcast. Subscribe there. Follow us. Share it. Tell your friends about us. 
and then we're on Rumble, and then yeah, all the other podcasting yeah. platforms. But get us out there, you know. We know you're listening to us, so yeah, we want to extend our reach. We up. want we want people to know that if they're interested in UFOs and aliens and all this fun stuff that's going on, but they don't have the time or energy to uh, check out every single thing that happens during the week. Right. They can just come here and listen to us for a couple of hours. Exactly. exactly. And get good movie recommendations that some <laughs> of us don't like. <laughs> hey man, you know, people differ in movies. It's okay. It's nothing personal. You know, I mean, I was watching it. I was like, yeah, I mean, I get it, but like, I just didn't, uh, didn't resonate. How about that? Pshaw. Yeah. Pasha is what I said. <laughs> Pasha. <laughs> Pasha. I mean, look, the ending was cool. I like that she sacrificed herself and all oh, that. Oh, spoilers. All all that stuff, but, you know, <laughs> hey, that's what happens when we talk about movies. Sorry. <laughs> I, what do you I, make sure, <laughs> I make sure never to spoil anything. And, Unless and, we say spoiler. Uh, yeah. Then I say plug your ears. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. Anyway, I, I'm tell it all, Topher. Um, I don't, you can follow me on X if you want at Topher at all. Um, I don't post on there much, whatever you do. Don't spend all your time on social media though, for sure. Yeah. That, I mean, exactly. It can, it can have negative effects and you know, yeah. it's not the real world, obviously. And our brains are not wired to, you know, to have those type of conversations and with many hundreds of people all the time and, endless and feeds this doesn't work for our brains and it's just i the the interaction with you know all these people who don't give two shits about you i think that is really mentally taxing so go mm-hmm. out um it's super bowl weekend see your friends see your family um go smoke a cigarette at a bar <laughs> meet meet some new people blow smoke in their face and then they'll blow smoke in your face and then you'll stink for the next like three days that was the only thing yes. I never liked. That was the thing about cigarettes is I always liked how they smelled. I could not stand how they tasted. Yeah, a lot of people say that, especially when it's first lit. They like that, that, yeah. that the smell of it. Because, um, yeah, that's always one of those things, you know, I, it hasn't happened in a while, but I go, man, I really want a cigarette because I can smell some. Yeah, and then once you have, you're like, oh, that wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then, that's totally, that's normal. Yeah. You know, and then, like, you go wash your hands, but your hands still smell like cigarettes. Oh, boy. I'm so glad I don't smoke anymore. Well, no, anyway, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. We're good. We're at an hour and 56 minutes. Go Niners. Fuck the Chiefs. <laughs> Fuck the Chiefs. Go Niners. Fuck and Taylor we'll see Swift. You all Taylor Swift week. is so overrated. Fuck Travis Kelsey. Um, I don't know. He's a good tight end, but he always plays good against the Broncos. That's why I don't like him. Oh, okay. And I don't like Kermit the Frog either. I'm not even going to say their quarterback's name. He's Kermit the Frog. All right. Bye, see you everyone. all next week. Bye. God, I want a cigarette.